Ian from Powerhouse Miniatures, how you doing? So this is another miniature painting tutorial on weathering tanks. So if you saw my last one, um, should have uploaded probably the same time. Here's a Rhino APC, so it's like a Space Wolves colour. Uh, it's undercoated with War Paint Wolf Grey and then highlighted with the airbrush with uh, Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey. So same name, different, obviously different manufacturer, different uh, colour. So all together we got, uh, it's just the two halves of a Rhino basically that I had left over from some of the Forge World uh, Demos Predators I've done over the years. Uh, <laughs> over the years, I sound like an old man sometimes, honestly. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what it is, it's just like colored on one side just so you can sort of see it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we've got a sponge, uh, we've got Dead White, Rise of Rust from Games Workshop, uh, Beastie Brown from Game Air, Doomball Brown, Steel and Mud from Games Workshop, and then Runefang Steel, Warp Block Bronze from Games Workshop as well. Uh, so a couple of the silvers, uh, so met Metallics, one this is like a, like, a, yeah, like a dark bronze and then Runefang Steel. You can mix up really any of the various shades, use different companies, different uh, varieties, all the rest of it. And then with the sponge as well. Um, this is from Battle Foam, I think, or KL Multicase. KL Multicase. And um, different types, so hopefully you can see, different types of foam have different uh, densities, like with the, reminds me of bread or something, you know, like the strata, whatever they call it. Uh, so yeah, if you um, in your hobby in life, if you want, try and hoard away different types of sponge because um, you get a different effect with different ones. So the order you do it in is kind of important. So for me, like what I would normally do is the sponge damage first, then the edge highlight, then chips and scratches, then grime streaks, and then I would do uh, what's that even leave? Oh yeah, the rust, the rust on the on the bottom. So four or five different uh, effects, and I'll try and show them all off. Uh, I'm going to do it on this piece here, so that you can um, uh, you can see all the effects concentrated on once, and I'll try and not be about 30 minutes. <laughs> so first off, uh, you want to do the brown first. The idea is that after you've done brown, you want to do the chips with the sponge, and then after you've done that, um, you go through where the brown was, and you put in uh, silver. So I'll do it right quick so you can see again. I've got the uh, Beastie Brown from Vallejo Game Air. So with a bit of sponge, I'm going to rip a bit off. So you've got two things. You can either use this rough edge that you've just ripped, which will give you a different sort of effect, or the edge, the flat edge will give you a... Uh, that's why I'll just show you. So this side here is going to be um, like rough bits. The flat edge is going to be even. Like, uh, wait, let's put a bit more on. Where are we? There you go. So the uh, which edge is straight at that edge probably. So this edge here is going to be really quite even. You can get quite a controlled effect. And then the corners are obviously going to get like you know the corner. You're going to get like a um, a straight line on one side. Uh, I'll try and show you that properly. So you get the idea anyway. Uh, that you get a straight line on one side. So what we're going to do is just put around the bottom edges where the paint isn't, like the uh, the highlights aren't, like so. It's going quite light. And again, it's really good to visualise where on the model it would take damage. So it'd usually be on the lower halves where it's bumped into stuff on the ground. So again, uh, use a palette. Don't use your hand, obviously. Use a palette, but um, that edge first. Across the bottom, this bottom edge. Like so. And then, already looking kind of cool, but... Uh, you can add easily, you can't easily take away, same as always, so if you want to do more then definitely but definitely don't like rush in I have a tendency to be a bit uh, uh, heavy handed I suppose <laughs> there you go um, I don't know where I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to be honest we'll just, we'll just show the thing off, we'll do, we'll do, just do a bit more by saying. I'm going to try and keep it kind of short this video Right, so you get the idea, it's like there, straight away, looking badass. So while that's drying, we'll do a bit of a, a, a dry brush so you can see. Uh, I don't usually edge highlight with a, um, to go through with a, like a fine brush because it takes absolute ages. So what I'm going to do is just dry brush, just again, just to show you quickly in the video so we don't end up going on 30 minutes. So the brush, uh, it's a really good start for you, dry the brush. 
Um, now, I find it works actually, if the brush has got a little bit of moisture and not completely dry. And then uh, I would use like a Games Workshop white normally. Like the Ceramite white is amazing. From there. So, with dry brushing, as always, you go top to bottom and gently. So just pick up the edges again. That's a really, it's a, it's a, a rule if you want that I didn't know was a rule. Like, yeah, it's easy to add, hard to take away. Because it's so true for like loads of these things. You want to try and be as subtle as possible because obviously you can go through afterwards and like uh, add stuff in. There you go, again, just real quick, um, right, edge highlight, really quite subtle, and then the highlight itself is so uh, light that obviously it's like kind of close, um, which is good anyway. Now the chips are dry, so again you go through, uh, we'll get a, yeah, we'll do more flank steel. So I'm going to use a different piece of it, of the same bit of sponge like this. And we'll do um, again. Test it out on a palette, not your hand. Palette, um, and then you go through the areas where the brown is. So it looks like the brown is underneath the top layer of paint, and the silver showing through from underneath. And then if you do it a bit on its own as well, it looks like chips and scratches in its own right. Um, now, in real life, obviously, this bit is, would be the door where it comes away and the marines come out, so that would be chips and scratched quite bad, but we're going to do a mud effect that I'll show you in a minute. So, again, um, it's quite a light silver colour, so actually you should probably use a darker silver, and I will see if I've got one just to show you. There we are, so uh, acrylic metal colour, we'll just... And as always, mix it up, mix up different colours. You can use, uh, obviously, a uh, grey instead of a silver. And that'd work the same. So we'll go and do like a couple of shades, uh, various ones. Yeah, so the idea is that the, the silver would be like the metal of the tank underneath that's been chipped away. And the brown would be a layer of paint underneath the top coat or like a bit that's been chipped and damaged. So, and again, this is pretty garish. I'm not going to do, I'm going to go, comp oh, you know, I wouldn't be this uh, forceful with it in real life. You'd go a bit more subtle. So you just, just get the idea. And then um, a variety of shades of each colour, a variety of techniques always looks really good. The order you do it in is kind of important as well because, like, you'll end up covering some, some of that up with the mud effect. So um, figure out something that works for you. So there you go. Looking pretty cool already, pretty beaten up. And again, concentrate on the bottom the bottom halves, um, where it would obviously touch the ground or would be like pushing past stuff in the battlefield that would be like, um, that would chip and scratch the paint off the stuff. So there you go. Um, so next up we've got chips and scratches. So super quickly, we're going to just do white white chips, different coloured chips uh, for different armour schemes and stuff. But I'm just going to show you white on this one. The idea is to get a really thin brush. I've got a small layer brush from Citadel with some white. <laughs> like this. So you've got a real sharp brush and then uh, I make sure that's on, on things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from perpendicular so that you've got the tiniest tip of the brush on the model and then flick really fast. If you've got enough paint on it works real nice. <laughs> right. Now I do this thing um, where you keep flicking, but sometimes you don't even hit the model to make sure that you just catch it, you know what I mean? So that you, you're doing, you're going this in the air, then you're slowly moving your hand on until the hand, uh, the brush actually touches the model. And basically, because of the curve of the, the fingers, the model, it comes away, you know what I mean? So it like tapers the shape naturally. Um, so again, coming from the front of the model, 
where it would hit various detritus on the battlefield is is the best. So um, coming from usually like bottom to top angle, like a diagonal angle. And then do a few like random sized ones. So I use say I use this. This is quite a time consuming process. Hopefully you can see some of the smaller ones so far. I'll do a few like big over the top ones so you can see. And then uh, instead of changing the angle of your hand, change the model itself. So that way, so I'm going to do it from like there. I seem to be able to do a straight line from like north to south with the brush. So if you change the angle of the model and not the brush itself, you can make sure that you can get the good br brush control that you've got uh, on the model without going like in a weird angle that's not natural. So I'm just gonna, I'll just keep doing them for now. I'm just gonna cover half of these up anyway with the uh, the mud effects and stuff. But just so you can see, so it's completely over the top. You'd never do this much damage and this much stuff unless that was like what you were going for, um, which basically I never seem to be. So again, think about what the model will be actually going through in the battle. You'd go like chips and scratches on. So just on here, they'd be like, say there's an animal or something that's got three claws. So you'd go like, you'd do three scratches that are the same length and near each other. Um, all the rest. So again, I'll just keep keep going. Random ones. But there you go. Right. So chips, scratches, and stuff like that. So again, to summarise on that, um, you go whichever is most most comfortable for you. For me, it's north to south with the brush. Um, start flicking in the air, and then bring the brush close in. So the tip of the brush just catches the model. So you get a very thin, very consistent line. Um, I would use well, actually, the dead white is already sort of uh, thin. It's already a bit thinner than like ceramite white from Games Workshop straight out of the pot. So use a bit of Vallejo me Lumian medium if you're going straight out of the pot with the uh, ceramite white or white scars a layer. Then <coughs> tip is like move, move this as opposed to moving the hand, so you're not going from weird angles. And then, yeah, as always, think about the actual thing in real life, like where it would come from. So like most of the scratches would be across the bottom. Now we got. Um, We'll do some streaks and grime and stuff. So we got the. Uh, you can use different colours. So in fact, I will use. No, in fact, I'm going to go for uh, Beastie Brown. You can just mix up multiple of colours. So the colour that you'd use for each one of these um, would vary depending on the paint job. So like, you could mix in a dark silver if that mixes with the paint. If you're using a Space Wolf colour like this, the Roomfang steel chips didn't look quite right because they didn't contrast enough. So then you could mix in a better. Um, a different colour of silver or even use like the warp block bronze instead for the chips uh, same for the rust and things um, so basically you do like a, a what do you call it not, not an edge highlight where you put it in the recesses like a, like a directed shade where you'd go through you know like with the brush and do all the uh, like a black line I guess but not black like brown a brown line there you go <laughs> so this would be sort of rust and things so um, on the inside of this part here you get a rust streak now the rust should always go from north to south that like it's facing the ground so I'm gonna inside this little bit where the feet are I'll show you like that the same sort of technique that you'd have with the thing where you'd go like with the chips and scratches where you'd go quite fast that like you do two or three on each one of various sizes and and with various amounts of paint on the brush so like there like one really long one, one shorter one, one small one, stuff like that. So it's all kind of random. And then like a like a shade or something like that, just put it right in the middle. Um if I can get my hands out of the way. And the inside of these parts. And then sort of like trailing off. So like that. Um got some like stri uh, grimy streaks sort of thing uh, but it looks kind of like rust like chipping and damage and things like that uh, sort of realistic so again I'll just do a few more uh, where we're going to put them just like bits, bits of stuff coming out now I've seen some people doing them really long like where you stump like almost the entire length of the thing I don't think that looks quite good unless you've got a load of brush skills so like the entire length of the tank could be like that 
and then you just do that like a million times <laughs> with really thin layers I'm doing it fast to like save time um, and then you concentrate the strength of the, the you know like the layers towards the top and you strengthen a few of them so it just looks like rust and streak and grime and, and shit like that so it does look really really good all together and then where you've done some of the chips as well like the uh, these ones um, if you did like like grime coming off them it looks kind of cool as well so like wherever you create the scratches like there uh, let's get a bit more paint on the scratch to get some chipping paint on the brush so just like these two brown underneath and then streaking down towards the ground looks pretty cool these ones as well will do the same sort of thing so like uh, so there you go um, I would use a lighter brown from that than a darker brown uh, Beastie Brown and Doom Ball Brown both from Games Workshop are really good because they're like a reddish sort of colour so um, so then I'll just do a few more of these big streaks because so far it looks kind of stupid uh, what works really well for that actually if you've got a brush that's broken you know like um, all the tips frayed and you can get like um, a really fast sort of effect by just streaking a, a broken brush just right down the middle but you see there that over time we've concentrated all the streaks on the top and you can see that they're emanating from these little footholds and yeah that's what you want so that's that's uh, that's that and then the last one is Sterling Mud so I've got a whatever this is a Rosemary and Co Shiraz Filbert that's knackered I've had for a long time basically I've got the um, Sterling Mud fresh I'm going to get quite a big bit on the tip of the brush and then we're going to go so this is the obviously this the front of the tank could be over there so we're going to go flick it this way so like it'd be south to east sort of thing um, with the brush at like a 45 degree angle so that it flicks off again and we're going to flick upwards so concentrating most of the thick mud effects where it would hit the front of the tank like there and then flicking it forwards like that and then reapply now the nice about the texture paint is obviously it's as it, I mean obviously it's textured <laughs> so it looks really good so it leaves it like chunks and bits of mud and, and things like that that come up um, and stick on the model don't cover up your chips too much but a little bit for um, variation and then now once the main chunks you've got like I've got like thick chunks on the bottom which will like obviously give it a 3d effect when it's almost none on the brush almost like a dry brush go through very lightly and just do streaky lines like so just all the way up and then um, up to about halfway up the actual model every so often you'll catch a wet lump of the actual 3d texture effect which will give it a random finish so sometimes like there I'm not really actually adding much to the model but other times you'll catch one of these wet lumps of the sterling mud and you'll drag it um, up the front of the model so there you go now that in particular um, will give the model a dynamic moving look um, where it looks like the model has been zooming in one direction a bit like directional lines and cartoon drawing um, and that sort of stuff so that looks really good and the last one rust so uh, on my podcast last week on episode two or three i forget which one episode th two uh, somebody gave me a listener question that was like i can't use weathering powders because i've got a bad chest so i was like right uh, and i addressed that in uh, episode three but there's a few different things you can do basically if you use um the vallejo or any well, if any of the weathering pigments obviously the um the pigment powders and mix them with water or medium they dry again back into the powder so if you mix them with water hopefully you wouldn't get too much of um, you know you wouldn't get too bad you wouldn't get them into your lungs or anything if you did mix them with the water so this is riser rust or riser rust from games workshop the technical one and in the same way as some of the streaks you put it into the corners where obviously where there's metal so like it'd be around the inside of the engines like there um, 
so I haven't painted any metal onto this obviously but like just around the insides of this bit or um, on the insides of there again just really quick I do just like thicker brush than this smaller one as well to get it like done a bit done a bit faster Uh, and it's cool to do like rushed streaks as well, so you can do like that sort of thing. Um, you know, just mix it up a little bit. Again, this is super, super rough, super quick. Um, looks good, but if I was doing it for myself or doing it on commission, it'd be like much neater, much slower, that sort of thing. So that's pretty much it. You get the idea. Um, the actual. Uh, engine tips, the little exhausts at the top would be in silver, so anywhere there's silver put a bit of the rust, so there you go, now I'm going to take a still image of this and I'll add that to the end of the tutorial um, but all together we've got mud effects, we're still in mud coming off the bottom and in, an angle to give it like a, a directional look, make it look like the model's been moving we've got chips in two different colours, or three different colours, Runefang steel we've got the Vallejo acrylic metal colour burnt iron uh, and you could even use some of the bronze ones like Waterlock Bronze from Games Workshop um, and then the Beastie Brown chips all done with the sponge you got uh, the fast sort of scratches done with a very small brush, a layer brush in white and this one in particular but again you could do any colour you want um, and we got like the rust effects, Reza Rust um, from Games Workshop there, dry like compound thing and then streaks with Beastie Brown again coming from various points facing the ground. So all together I think it looks pretty badass, it didn't take very long. You could do an entire tank in an hour or two. Um, all together, so there you go. So like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a still uh, picture to the end. So you can see uh, the full finished effect with the lights and everything. So as always, cheers for watching. Check out my channel for loads more. I've got podcasts, painting tutorials, um, uh, commissions, showcases, battle reports, uh, everything, reviews, shit like that. So check them out. And yeah, have a good day.